So, the shutter is all back together, functioning nicely, not so much the flash. I've got to do more work on that, but that, for the moment, that's all I'm doing on that. I need to turn my attention to the film advance mechanism. Now set to the 6x6 arrange, setting here, I would expect that to lock as I advance the film and allow me to fire the shutter. It did that time. And it did that time, but it doesn't always. On the 35mm setting here, it says free. Now, I don't know how the 35mm film winding was achieved on this exactly. Almost certainly it was just by turning that knob. But um, it's not coupled. It doesn't have an automatic stop there as far as I can tell. There must have been one some way to meter the film. But you can fire the shutter as many times as you like without moving the film advance at all. I want to remove the knobs from the top of the camera and uh, work on that. Now there's a little fold down lever here, a kickstand. It will stand the camera up nice and level, that will allow me to work on it a bit easier. So, I've got to get this top off. I've got pins, pinhead screws here and here. If it's much like the other one that I worked on, they should come off without too much of a fight. This is just a film reminder dial over here, which is pretty much stuck. Here is our depth of field scale for our rangefinder coupling. Of course, I've got to uh, check and clean the rangefinder yet. That's another task to do. Let me find the right tool for this first. Given the very tiny size of the pinholes in these screws, They could be entertaining. I'm forced to use a pair of tweezers because the tool I have would not deal with that. There's a little washer. And on this side, let's try the same. That one is left hand thread. Now it's lucky it was a little bit loose because otherwise I would have fought with that for a long time. Let's see if we can get this film reminder dial off the top. We can. And will that come off? It's not showing much interest in it, is it? I'm going to have trouble getting under the edge of this, so I can just tell. That is um, very stubborn. Okay, it's off now. And I've got three screws visible there. So let's have those off. At this end, on the other one I worked on, that knob simply unscrewed. And so it proves again. Oh, it's got a little spring under it. And there's our frame counter. So 
see there's some sort of interesting marking in here. I can't tell whether that's wear or some allowance for adjustment. And there's a spring underneath that too. Now the top cover on the last one I serviced, there were four screws I think holding the top cover on. The top cover was very tight. But the other screws, the ones in the shoe and the one on the front there, didn't need to come off. So we'll see how we get on here. It's not exactly rushing to fall off. I'm going to remove this one, which was a port for the range finder adjustment and see if that loosens anything up. No, not a sausage. We've got another one hiding somewhere. Don't appear to have. It's possible this window on the range finder screws through. Let's have a look at that. Yes, it looks very much like that front lens there screws in. Um, that'll have to come out. And I see there's a little washer under there too. Make sure I don't lose that. That went underneath that lens. Now the top cover lifts off. Here I have the range finder. The arm on the range finder here tracks the cam at this point. This cam here focuses the lens by bringing the front further back into the body as required. That's our shutter release there. And I can see a mechanism here for frame counters and so forth. I'll reassemble my frame counters so I can see how that action works. So it has double exposure prevention for the roll film, the 6x6 side of it. And all the action is, is happens with these levers over here. So that revolves until it locks. The shutter must be cocked. Press the shutter release. It also acts on this lever, unlocking the film advance for you to wind on again. So I'm going to have to remove the range finder so I can expose all those components and make sure that they are clean and tidy and uh, no dust or dirt, nothing sticking anywhere and um, lubricate anything that needs a lubricating. So the range finder first. Well there's a screw here and a screw here. That's all I can see. This screw here is just for the arm, so hopefully it's only two screws. The screw heads are a little bit knocked about, which means someone's been here before me. Um, given the age of the camera that would be hardly surprising. See if this will uncouple for us. Lift that off. I'm trapped by this frame here. And that frame is 
coupled to this arm, the slider arm. So that's going to have to come off. There's a single screw holds that down in place. Take the screw and the leaf spring off there. That coupling arm will that slide out now? Will that help? Yes, with a bit of wriggling it does. And I can lift off the rangefinder with it. Now that arm must also mask the finder in some way perhaps. So I think that yes, I think it does. I think that masks the finder view. Put that to one side. I can look in at my film advance lock here and better. Get a better view of that now. Cock the shutter. Fire the shutter. Wind on. This swings this lever around. That swings that lever around. That looks almost like it's a little bit bent. And then that drops back into place. And this um, must hold that in place until until what? Until the, no, that this arm's held in place by this. Well, it's, yeah, it's allowed to fall back from that point. All right, I need to take great note of where everything fits here, and then I can clean things and lubricate them. So I'll remove my frame counter again. And the frame counter, oh, I can see it has a disc here. Yeah, I've seen that arrangement before. I've seen that on a, a Zeiss Icon camera. Two discs. This arm will drop into the slots there. And shifting this probably shifts the second ring here and allows it and blocks it from falling back in. Yeah, so these are sprung loaded. Yeah, so that, that's it. Yeah, I've got a vague idea how that works. I've seen that on other cameras. Of course, and the shutter can't be depressed far enough to lock, to allow that action to move, unless the shutter's been cocked. Because the shutter is prevented from releases from, prevented from moving on the shutter unless it's been cocked. All right. That sounds sounds all right. Well, I will get a few still photos of this. I think. Now this arm here, I suspect that that's bent. It's got a, an angle on it that I don't believe is original. I believe that arm was probably originally flat. It, if it tips up, it can almost tip over the top of that thing. So I suspect that that was originally flat and it's got bent up. But I will check that carefully because I've gotten a lot of trouble in the past from straightening out things that I think are bent. And it turns out that they were meant to be that shape. All this works pretty well. All I need to do is make sure it's free from dust, free from grip, and clean anything with sticky grease and re-lubricate it. All right. All 
I want to just clean all these surfaces, make sure that there's no dirt and problems on them. It's a bit hard to tell what you're looking at because the surface of the metal is quite rough, or at least the surface of the paint is quite rough. So it's difficult to tell whether you're looking at dirt or whether you're just looking at the matte finish of the paint. To this piece, this is the slider that went on there, and it looks dirty, but that dirt's not coming off, so it's like it's been chemically blackened, and um, that blackening is sort of partly worn away. So that. I think I would want to wipe a bit of molybdenum on the base of that, just uh, on the edges. And on the underside, and I'm not really putting much on here, you just look. It'll just make, make, make sure it it moves as freely as it's ever going to. I'll get its spring hooked back into position. That looks good. The second lever, the one that sat on it, I've got nothing to compare it with. And it looks bent to me. I'm just going to flatten that out. And I just tap that on the wooden block with a hammer. And that went that way around. And we have its pivot and spring. I'll just run some molybdenum paste in the pivot hole just to make sure that that's free to swing. Okay. I think that spring went from there to there. Now this end is tucked down and looks a little bit funny. I have to look closely at what that mates with to make sure that that's not a problem. Right, so you can see that the action of the release is blocked unless this is swung over, presumably by the film advance. Oh, it's by that piece here. Okay, that's good. I'll clean the next part. Now this little gear, I'll just run a little bit of molybdenum paste onto that. That was pretty... I was, wasn't enthusiastic about coming off, it's much happier about going back on. It has a retaining screw. I'll just put the knob on there, I want to see that thing revolve.
that moves smoothly enough. There's a certain amount of resistance in the take-up knob there, and I can only think that that's because it's got a uh, an anti-backup spring wound tightly around it on the shaft to stop it turning the wrong way. This piece. Oh, what this goes on there and it's screwed at the pivot the screw that forms the pivot for that I just want to rub a bit of molybdenum and paste on that And the spring for this was quite, uh, was wound round quite tightly from memory. Let's see if I can get that through there. And behind its post. Like that. I cock the shutter. Press that. Should that be on the other side of that lever? Possibly. Let's try this. Yes, that lever's on the wrong side there, so I'll just swap that over. No, it wasn't. I've done something wrong. Oh, excuse me while I check my uh, images. Oh yes, of course this is not um, bearing against the ring. That's why we're getting funny results. That's okay. No cause for alarm as you were. That's all good, that's working smoothly. It, uh, it's certainly not as free running as I would like to see a mechanism. I'm just going to run a bit of molybdenum paste on the tip of that lever where it runs against that sloping piece there, that angled piece. Yeah, it's um, a little bit ambitious getting this piece to push this back because it's only got a, a quite a shallow slope on that piece of metal there. But it does work, and it does work reliably. The shutter release piece at this point is that pivot screw. That's, that's okay. And if I put a little smear of molybdenum paste under that lever, will it make that operate smoother? Or at the end of the film, of course.
how do you tell it you're at the end of the film? That way, presumably. Right. Okay, that appears to work well enough. Now, yeah, can I make that run smoother? Probably not. It's a fairly crude mechanism. And it doesn't exactly have nicely rounded bearing surfaces. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be as flash as it's ever going to be. There's a reason things aren't made like they were in the old days and typically it's because they weren't very good in the old days and people have worked out better ways to do things. Let's put my frame counter disc on here and see how it goes. Does it have to be timed in some fashion? No, I think that's fine as it is. That's, that appears to be working well enough, that's good. Okay, well I think I'm done with that part. I do want to clean on the top here and get that um, film reminder dial to revolve. 